Well, we're getting ready for our next live race of the night. The three-year-old Colt Payson can pretty much the story in this one is that this is a wide open affair. We have had horses all season long beating one another at certain points. Shady character on top for a while, art escape on top for a while. We come down to the Breeders' Crown. It's anybody's ball game. Well, trainer Bob McIntosh, the trainer of Artescape, said this division is a merry-go-round. Artescape is the one to beat. Uh, he is basically uh, going to put his uh, reputation on the line tonight, but he's got uh, Post 8 standing in his way and several of the sports top glamour boys. The, only the third time we've had the one, two, three finishers in the Meadowlands pace in the Breeders' Crown. We'll take a look at the field drivers and odds for the upcoming Breeders' Crown three-year-old Colt Pace. And once again, you'll see the post positions are different from the head numbers because we have an entry. Well, Art Escape, the 97 Breeders' Crown champion, is coupled with Fit for Life, the messenger winner. Browning Blue Chip stormed home in 25-3 and in his elimination. Dragon again. According to Ron Pierce, he gets an attitude sometimes. Day in the life, the Meadowlands Pace winner, sealed and delivered, last year's divisional champion. A supplemental entry is Art Dialing, and Memphis Flash rounds out this field. So there is the field for the three-year-old Cole Pace right now, down to the paddock and Ken Horn. Well, Bob McIntosh, one of the uh, top trainers in North America, has won 10 Breeders' Crown titles, but he's never able to win the three-year-old Pace and Cole Championship. I think he's got a great shot tonight in Art Escape. And he's definitely a nice horse. He's been uh, consistent every start, and uh, he seems to be coming to race in good, sharp shape. And uh, you know, he's a uh, he's a horse that this racetrack should uh, really be designed for. Be should really fit the racetrack because it's only one turn, and that should be disliking. Now you said that the the front end speed's been holding up a lot tonight. Uh, that doesn't favor Art Escape. No, he's got the eight hole. So, uh, but uh, all the races I've been watching, the front end speed has been holding up all night, and uh, I think he's going to he's going to be close to the front to have a chance. Let's take a look at the elimination uh, last week. This horse was under wraps at the wire, winning very handily. How did he come out of the race? Tremendous. Yeah, he had a great week, and <clears throat> he warmed up sharp tonight. So last week was real sprint, and, uh, you know, when Shady Character got the quarter backed off 29-1, I was uh, very concerned. And uh, But he come home in good shape, and Mike said he was great. So we're in good shape for tonight. And who do you have to, who do you have to beat in this race? Well, I think our dialing's the horse that's on the improve. He's kind of the dark horse. He's been purchased within the last couple starts, and... Uh, he impressed me last week, and uh, I think he'll be heard from tonight. Bob McIntosh, trainer of the world champion Art Escape, one of the favorites in the upcoming three-year-old Colt Pace. And you're taking a look at number six, Bob Glazer's Art Dialing. Glazer saw this Colt, liked him, purchased him, and erased him in the Cleveland Classic. Instant gratification as he won, but fleeting joy as he was disqualified moments later. I asked Bob Glazer about that whole situation. Well, it's just one of those things that happens, Gary. Uh, the horse raced very well, and I, I think that uh, at least I, my, my purchase was, uh, I was on the right track. But um, sometimes, sometimes things just don't work out, and um, at least I held on for second, and that was just because the other horse uh, finished second. So consequently, he was placed first. Um, the judges deemed that I interfered with him, and they placed me second. So... Um, it still was 54000 back towards the purchase price. 54000 back towards the purchase price or the supplemental price of $45,000 at Cost Glazer to get this one in the Breeders' Crown. And right now we're going to talk to driver George Brennan who drove this colt for the first time last week in the Breeders' Crown eliminations. George, how does he feel? How did he race for you last week and how does he feel tonight? Oh, he feels real good. Uh, you know, we won an excellent race last week and... Uh, you know, he's coming into it real fresh. He feels exactly the same as last week, and I really expect a good race from him tonight. George, he flew home in 25 and 2, and you said he wasn't used at all. Well, what I mean by what I meant by not being used at all was the first three quarters. I just kind of let him, uh, you know, lay back in a short field, which allowed me to do that. And then I just kind of let him sprint home on his own, and uh, he come 25 and 2. So uh, that really impressed me. George, who do you have to beat tonight? Oh, but there's about two, there's about three or four of them I have to beat, you know, that are really main contenders. Uh, you know, day in a life, he looks awful good. Brown and blue chip, fit for life, race awesome last week, and uh, Art Escape's giant. So, uh, you know, the trip, it's definitely going to boil down to what kind of trip I get here. And uh, that's what it's going to boil down to, you know, the trip. All right, George, best of luck, safe drive to you, and we'll take a look now okay, at one of the you. horses that George pointed out that he has to beat here, and that is number two, who you're looking at right now, Browning Blue Chip with...
the leading driver in the Breeders' Crown Series, Hall of Famer John Campbell. Gary, John Campbell said he seemed smoother gated last week in his elimination, and with that tightener, we can look for better things. He's fresher now, and he followed live cover, the live cover of his stablemate Fit for Life. Here is Browning Blue Chip right here, and he's going to tip, and they're going to take aim on Day in the Life, who has the lead there. This was John Campbell's option to drive Browning Blue Chip, despite the fact he won the Messenger Stake with fit for life browning blue chip sire presidential ball off the board only twice in his three million dollar career and uh, both were breeders crown events fit for life was new driver jack moiseev roughed first over here and gradually wore down day in the life but it was browning blue chip to take it all and he's a fresh horse gary and how about fit for life kenny upsetting shady character and spoiling his triple crown bid with a big messenger stakes win in pennsylvania well fit for life in that race with john campbell got an absolutely perfect trip fit for life uh, in that uh, messenger stake was able to uh, ride uh, Art Escape. Art Escape wore down Shady Character in the messenger stake and uh, Fit for Life Fit for Life and John Campbell right here is uh, Dragon again and right here is Fit for Life and as we uh, roll it through the stretch that's Shady Character, Art Escape here uh, sh and Shady Character not quite the uh, same horse he was earlier in the season. He did win his elimination of this but Art Escape guns him down. That's Dragon again here as they come down to the wire and Fit for Life and John Campbell has suggested a, an equipment change after the elimination, and uh, that proved to be uh, the winning combination. John Campbell and Brett Pelling, the uh, leaders in the sport. All right, I'll ask you, who do you like, Ken? I'm going to go with Browning Blue Chip, a powerful colt. He's tighter and fresh. He has a big kick, and we've got Campbell and Pelling. All right, how about uh, number two, Browning Blue Chip? Uh, we take a look at him. We also want to find out who Ken Hornick likes in this three-year-old colt pace. Kenny? Well, I've been picking favorites all night, so I might as well stick with the favorite here. Art Escape. Bob McIntosh said this colt is really good right now. He looked real good last week. Uh, that's my all right, choice. And Art Escape Dara speaks, people listen final. quickly. Dara, who do you like? I'm going with Art Escape because trainer ba Bob McIntosh has won more Breeders' Crown races than any other trainer. All right, I'm over for two. I'll go for number six, Art Dialing. Once again, upstairs to Roger Houston. Three-year-old Pacers are in behind the gate. Gate swings down the chute, and here they come. Up and pacing fast out of the gate, it's sealed and delivered. Going right to the front. Hard escape on the outside. Inside, dragging again. Down the back side of the quarter. Browning Blue Chap gets away. Fourth, racing death, fifth for life. Sixth on the outside, that's Art Dialing. Racing seven, day in a life. Racing eight, crawfish, trillion in the field. Memphis Flash, opening quarter in 26 and two. On down the back side of the three-eighths mark. Up on the outside, that's Art Escape and Mike shots drifting to the front. Sealed and delivered, racing second. Yeah, to the turn, racing up on the outside. Sealed and delivered, and Tony Morgan right back out on the outside. With the cover, drag it again on the outside. Browning Blue Chip, racing fourth. Fit for life, fifth. Look at the half, 53. 26 and 3, second quarter. Around the turn, Art Escape, the leader. A sealed and delivered on the outside. And here comes Browning Blue Chip, 3 wide. Inside, Dragon again, 4. Fit for life, comes to the outside, 5th. 3 quarters, 1, 21 and 2. 28 and 2. Third quarter, coming to the wire, Art Escape. Browning Blue Chip on the outside, Dragon again. Coming to the wire, Art Escape. Browning Blue Chip on the outside, Dragon again. Art Escape, Browning Blue Chip on the outside. Coming to the wire, it's Art Escape and Browning Blue Chip. Too close to call, a photo all the way. 149, three fifths. An incredible race in the three-year-old Colt Pace Breeders' Crown event. And very tight at the finish, Roger Houston called it Art Escape in front with a mile in 149 and three, just four-fifths of a second off the fastest Breeders' Crown mile of all time set by Jenna's Beach Boy. Let's take another look at that very exciting and tight finish. Gary, this is an epic duel down the stretch between two top Colts and two great drivers. Bob McIntosh said this uh, Art Escape is a lot like his sire, Art's place, and he showed that tonight. 
This year, he thinks he's somebody. He's gained a lot of weight, and he's turned into a real man. Tonight, I think he's a divisional champion. Well, trainer Bob McIntosh raced both parents, won both Breeders' Crowns at fours with Art's Place and delinquent account. Art Escape would become McIntosh's first repeat crown winner. A photo for win. We're taking a look at Art Escape right now for driver Mike Lachance looking to pick up his 17th Breeders' Crown victory. And welcome back to Colonial Downs in New Kent, Virginia. And in fact, you are looking at the winner of the Breeders' Crown three-year-old Colt Face, number 1A in the program. It is Art Escape, a three-year-old Colt by Art's Place out of delinquent account by On the Road Again, owned by Brittany Farms and Brian Monison, trained by Bob McIntosh, and Mike Lachance was aboard, who right now is standing by with our Ken Hornick. Well, Mike, uh, great job. You earned your money there. You uh, had to keep this horse live all the way around this big racetrack. Well, I don't know if I've done a great job, but the horse raced great because he had every chance in the world to get beat. And uh, But he never stopped digging in at the end there. He even uh, impressed me. He even surprised me because I didn't know that he could uh, stand that kind of pressure. Yeah, because when you uh, pulled this horse out to get the lead, I thought Morgan was going to let you go, but he played hardball. Yeah, well, I don't understand. I, th I think he uh, maybe got his horse uh, going too much, a little bit behind the gate, and he couldn't uh, get him to relax. I think so that that was the problem. Okay, Mike, you had to go to work on this horse all the way down the stretch. I thought John Campbell's going to go by it because of the trip that he had, but this is a true champion pacer right here in Art Escape as he dug in gamely. I think I think so. That, uh, it's not because I was driving the horse, but... There's not too many horses that could stand that kind of pressure and still uh, be there at the wire. You've won many big races in your life. Would you rank this near the top? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because, you know, I had all kinds of problems during the year and uh, with, the, with this colt that uh, get, got hurt early uh, this year and you start late and the change of driver like on the shady character back to him, I think the, for me it's uh, something very special. Mike Lachance and Art Escape. Escape with a victory in the Breeders' Crown for the three-year-old Pacing Colts. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. The Breeders' Crown three-year-old Colton Gelding Pace is official. There you see the time. A sparkling one. 49-3. and three. Art Escape, the winner. Browning Blue Chip was second. And Dragon again was third. And we'll take a look at the complete order of finish in this event. Art Escape on top. Browning Blue Chip. Two of the top contenders here, no question about it. They were 1-2. Art Darling, my pick, well, fourth, not too bad. Once again, day in a life, Metal Lands pace winner finished back in the pack, as did the early pace setter, sealed and delivered. Let's take another look down the stretch, and we'll pick it up with Ken Workington. Well, here it is, Art Escape on the lead, and they fan out across the track here and take their shots at him, but this is a question of pedigree and will to win. Dragon again comes out of the pocket, and here is John Campbell on the outside with Browning Blue Chip. Art Dialing, he came, tried to close from far back, and the others are giving futile chase. So as they approach the uh, finish, it's down between Art Escape and Browning Blue Chip. Okay. Mike Lachance is all out on this Colt as he had been used hard, early fractions. He was pressured on the turn, sealed and delivered, kept him out there, but he digs in, and Browning Blue Chip, who had a, really a perfect trip off those hot fractions, didn't have it. And there you take a look at the winner's circle and the groom that uh, Dara interviewed earlier. Suzanne is a very happy lady right now. She's done an awful lot of work with this colt and it has all paid off and she's gonna be a very happy person for tonight and the remainder of the 1998 season. Again, down to Ken Hornick. Well, thank you very much, guys. A uh, real happy winner's circle here. The uh, two owners, the two breeders, the trainer. First of all, George Siegel. Art Escape has to be one of the best horses that your farm has ever raised and raced. Absolutely. Tonight's performance proves it. It was the best tonight. Wire to wire. This is your partner here, Brian Monison. Brian, uh, you, you look, you've, you've been smiling since you came down from the grandstand. <laughs> hey, there's nothing like uh, uh, what Bob did as medicine for me, that's for sure. Art Escape has just been a great thrill tonight. He's been a great thrill since his two-year-old year, two year, year. Okay, Brian, I know your health hasn't been the greatest, but I'll tell you, you probably feel 150% better right now. I told Mike <laughs> he gave me the best medicine I've had. <laughs> okay, this is Bob McIntosh. Bob, a quick word from you. You told me about 20 minutes ago this Colt was on top of his game. You never won the three-year-old pacing Colt final before, but you now have one in the books. Art Escape, compare him to his father. Uh, two different horses, but uh, 
This guy's a pit bull. I mean, he fought hard. I mean, uh, he turned back a couple stiff challenges there from a long shot, and he's, he fought back in the stretch. He had every reason to get beat. He fought hard, he dug deep, and he went it. So he, he's, he's a champion. Hard escape, the three-year-old pacing colt champion, big mile of 149 and three-fifths. And Ken, I believe that you picked Art Escape, so you've got a win on the night, and Ken Workington has one win on the night. I've got uh, zero wins on the night, but folks, Dara Torres is three for three. Go figure.